Yo, 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 Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. I'm going to do this lesson because it was brought to my attention. I had got asked on how do you know who to follow. How are we know? How are we supposed to know who to follow? Well, the Bible tells us who we're supposed to follow. And I want to give um, some understanding on that. So, first thing you really want to do is know, you must know who the Bible was given to. That's something that you have to know first and foremost. Who the Bible was given to. This is Psalms 147 and 19. Psalms 147 and 19, and the Bible says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So right off the top, the Bible says, He shows his words the Most High God showed his word to one group of people, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Verse 20 says, He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So no one else knew the judgments, the statutes of the Most High God other than Israel. I'll take you to another place real quick. Just to prove my point and back that up. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So again, God is speaking through a prophet to the nation of Israel and telling them that the Most High God has only known one family on the earth, and that is the Israelites. And he's going to punish them for not being obedient. So again, we have to know first who the Bible was given to. <clears throat> a lot of times when we go to these churches and we hear other men speak that look like you, that look like yourself, they might have very eloquent speeches, right? They might have very good um, convincing, convincing stories, right? But who were they taught by? They were taught by men that were not of the nation of Israel. They go to these seminary schools and... They are taught by other nations of people the belief, the doctrine that God has set up for one nation of people. All right? This is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. It says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. I want to stop right there because it uses the word profane. So profane goes into being twisted or convert or um slakia i'm butchering that word but it's just twisted they twist the truth they twist everything that they touch nothing is sacred because it says a profane person as esau so esau profanes everything that he does everything that he teaches he speaks everything is profane everything is twisted you got half truth and half lie. You never get the whole full story of the truth, right? So think the truth is really covered up. You get half the truth and half lies, which ultimately makes it a lie. So you can't get the truth out of that. So Esau teaching, Esau being a profane person, Esau being a twisted nation of people, Esau, Edom, they, their teachings being twisted, those are people that you cannot fully trust. You cannot fully take what they say for 100%, right? So the people that the Most High God set up on the earth are going to be more inclined to want to know all truth, right? And push all truths. So you got to come back first to the people that the Bible was given to. 
that's first things first, right? Uh, second thing, um, you must know what what to love and what to hate. In the Christian church, they will not teach you what to love and what to hate. They will not teach you what sin is. As, as a matter of fact, in this day and age and time, um, there are some that might because the Israelites have been doing their work for decades and decades and now the truth has been revealed out there on the streets that the Christian church is not teaching the Bible. The only ones that are really teaching the Bible are the Israelites and mainly those men that are out there on the streets and the highways and byways. But you got to know first and foremost what love is and what evil is, what hatred is, what good is and what bad is, right? This is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. It reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. So if you got men that love money, men that love cars, men that love even women, even their families, more than they do the Most High God, it says the love of God is not in them. So you want to make sure that this man or this woman loves the Most High God first and foremost above all things, right? That's something that we have to do. Um, in the book of Matthews, we were given a warning, and I want to read that warning. Let's go into it. <clears throat> this is Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. It says, Beware of false prophets. Right, so this is speaking about false prophets, which come into you, come to you in sheep's clothing, clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Right, so these are wicked men. They come to you sweet. They come to you nice. Um, they may not even come to you in uh, sheep's clothing. Right, you got to be aware of men that are that are claiming to be Israelites. Right, but they're they have one idea in their mind. It could be money. It could be uh, um, you working for them, them trying to master over you or lord over you. Right. So you got to be aware of these things. You really got to study to show yourself approved ultimately. But just a quick tip, real quick. I mean, this is not going to be a long video. So it says, verse. 16 it says ye shall know them by their fruits you have to really know what's going on because you might get confused in thinking that oh well this preacher he's got a big congregation he's got a big church a big building you got to be careful even of that because that is not the fruit that the most high god is necessarily going into right the fruits so you got to you know them by their fruits it says, do men gather grapes of this of thorns and th and figs of thistles? So men don't go to uh, get grapes and leave the grapes on the ground and just get the thorns and thistles. That's not what they do. They actually get the fruit. So this is what you want to get. You want to actually get the fruit. It says, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit fruit now i want to get um because i didn't plan on this so salaki let me go ahead and get this i was trying to make this as short and sweet as possible but i definitely want to make sure we get some understanding of good fruit right good fruit this is sirach chapter 35 and verse 1 it says he that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough he that taketh heed of the commandment offereth a peace offering, right? So the commandments is a peace offering to the Most High God. That's the type of fruit. That's the type of offering that you want to make sure that you're bringing to the Lord, right? You got to keep the commandments of the Most High God. I'm going to read it again. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed of the commandments offereth a peace offering. 
right? So we got to make sure that we're keeping the commandments of the Most High God, the, command, the law, statutes, and commandments. I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to start at verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Right? By their fruits ye shall know them. What kind of offering are they bringing to the Most High God? Are they keeping the commandments? Are they not? Are they keeping the feast days? Are they keeping um, holidays? Are they keeping Halloween? Are they keeping... You know, uh, uh, um, are they keeping Hanukkah? Are they keeping Passover? Are they keeping Christmas? What What are they keeping? You got to discern these things and find out what what type of fruit are they doing. Uh, verse twenty. Therefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will. Of my father which is in heaven so those that are doing the will of the father which is in heaven which I've been going over quite a few times and a few of my last videos um, the will of the father let's find out let's find out what that is this is the book of Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8 Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8 I delight to do thy will oh my God yeah thy law is within my heart so King David knew the will of God, and he said it was the law, right? The law of God is the Father's will, okay? I'm going back to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 22. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name? have cast out devils in thy name done many wonders wonderful works and they and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye workers of iniquity iniquities are trespasses right trespasses are sins iniquity is sin so you got to know what sin is if that preacher is not telling you what sin is and telling you to stay away from these things, you do not listen to him. All right. Go to those men that are teaching you what sin is and to stay away from it. Right. Ultimately. Right. This is the ultimate proof, ultimate proof of um, who to follow. Right. The ultimate proof of who to follow. First John chapter two and verse three. It reads, and hereby we do know that we know him, right? This is how we know that we know the Most High God and his Son. It says, if we keep his commandments, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So we want to stay away from all liars, right? We want to stay away from those people that give half-truths and the other lies, right? So this is how we determine whether or not someone knows him, and if they're qualified to teach, qualified to be to follow, it says, <clears throat> verse five, but whosoever, but whoso house Salakia, but whoso keepeth the word, his word, in him verily the love of God is perfected, right? So the love of God is perfected in those men and women that keep his word and keep his commandments. Hereby we do know that we know him. He that saith, he that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself, ought himself as also, so, so to walk, even as he walk. So we got to make sure that we walk as his son walk, as Christ walk, right? So we got to make sure that we're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and being obedient and not disobedient. And understanding what sin is. This is Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8. Again, this is the ultimate proof on who you're supposed to follow. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But though we, but though we 
or an angel from heaven preacheth another gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be a curse right so if someone else is coming and preaching a different gospel than what was set up from Christ and his disciples it says let him be accursed right let him be accursed so we got to make sure that we understand who to follow and making sure that we understand that we got to follow after those men and women that are preaching and teaching the gospel it says as we said before so say I now again if any man preach another gospel unto you then what we that what so like you that ye have received let him be accursed so it says let him be accursed that person man or woman is a curse the prophets of old have always said one thing keep the commandments of god right so if you stray away from those things if you stray away from those prophets and their teachings then it says that you should be a curse or that person so anyone straying away from those prophets and their teachings should be a curse. Finally, it says, verse 10, For do I now um, pursue men, persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? So this is a question. Do I persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ, right? So if you're seeking to please men, you are not qualified to be a servant of Christ, right? We got to make sure that we can discern whether or not a person is trying to please men, if they're trying to please themselves, or they're trying to please God, right? We got to make sure that we know that. Last scripture, Isaiah chapter 8. In verse 20 that because Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 says to the law and to the testimony if any slucky if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them right so anyone you can determine whether or not anybody is qualified to teach or to follow if they are not speaking according to the word of the Most High God okay and they got to be key. It says to the law and to the testimony, right? The laws and the testimonies of the Bible. This is what the teacher has to be teaching and is qualified to teach and be followed, right? So with that, Lord willing, y'all got some understanding. And I give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.